wanted to run by a quick review, a little flashback. I own very few ASICs anymore, and this is one of the pairs I've kept for a long time. Largely found an issue due to the lack of uh, consistent fitment. Most of the time a 12.5, 12.5 works for me, but sometimes that's not good enough and I've had to go to a 13 and I've found some 12s work. I've found some 13s to fit like 14s and some 12s to fit like 11s. Um, but this one I happened to luck out and get my ideal size. I would, in my opinion, say I overpaid for these um, for what they are. But at the time and given the quality and, and the fact that they've become my favorite Gelite 3 that I've, I've really ever owned, uh, the details are and the craftsmanship on these is like second to none for a non-custom shoe, a non-Italian made shoe. Um, the, the Mida collab from the 25th anniversary year in 2015 is uh, just in my opinion second to none. I uh, blown away by the details even down to the the chain link fence insoles that I've never used so they look new because they are um, and they are board lasted so you get you get to see the, the decent cardboard last in the inside old school style the way they probably made them in 1990. Uh, when it was an original model but i don't think i've ever taken to youtube with kind of a review of these i'm sure there are many out there over the years uh, perhaps this will catch someone's eye who wasn't around then a quick uh, refresh on the uh, what was happening at the time is that the collaboration with asics was like at an all-time fever pitch high you had not only ronnie feig um, doing all his stuff with kith and kind of really breathing retro life into ASICs as a brand that it otherwise probably wouldn't have without it. Um, and then you'd, you'd also seen a number of other collabs, including with Mida. I think they had done two before this. There was a black, all blacked out one. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a patent leather gray and blue pair uh, that I'm forgetting the name of. And they're quite scarce at this point. Um, but despite the limited numbers and uh, the fact that they weren't getting on a lot of feet, these were making the rounds uh, with the social media and especially runner fans and uh, fans of quality. And particularly that year, you know, some people obviously, there was one that released every single month. Some people had to have every one, right? So they were they were going after whoever the next collab was. I'm, I'm not a completist, so I ended up only getting two of these in the Totolo collab, um, which are known as paper cuts. These are the Mida Far East, um, which it says on the yellowing but clear part of the insole or the uh, outsole. So um, very impressive. Uh, the other thing in terms of the build, the other thing I wanted to comment on was that this particular pair was retailed at only $160, which given the, the spec of, of how well it's made is, is pretty low. What ended up happening is by the end of the year, they had quickly risen up into the 175 and even got up into the $200 range per pair for the exact same sneaker, just a different collaborator. Why that is, I'll never really understand. Um, so these ended up being a collective bargain relative to the retail price, even though they were reselling for all over, you know, for different amounts. Um, the Koi Fish collab um, is the other one that's generally the most sought over after from this pack and the uh oh, oh what the foot patrol collab in all olive suede um i really like those except for i don't love the yellow hits and i can't stand the white midsole on them i love that this one had a colored midsole um if they had done a some type of a colored or muted midsole on the on the um uh, foot patrol collab i probably would have picked those up as well because the suede is like amazing um anyway the i believe it was the bait collab that hit the 200 dollars mark they're an all black pair and uh they used a little bit of uh, fish leather if you don't know what that is just look it up kind of fascinating it looks like snake scales but it is actually um the skin of a fish turned inside out and gives a cool scaly uh, appearance probably not the toughest of stuff out there um, for abrasion resistance, but it does, it does look good. However, that pair was quite boring in most people's estimate and not worth the $200 price tag. Uh, these have, of course, two lace sets just to kind of get into the quick review of it here. You have the, uh, white lace set and then the darker blue set, and then they both share kind of a, a lighter blue, uh, shade in each one. 
uh, unique to each lace. They have the tips that uh, I believe reads Mida. <laughs> it's a little hard to read. Um, and then the this is the easier one to show off. It has the Tokyo badge on the dark blue side of the split tongue. So it's kind of fascinating too to see this isn't a light or your eyes playing tricks. This is actually two different shades of blue. It's a light blue on the medial and a dark blue on the lateral. Um, there's a lot of uh, notice details like that on the shoe. You have the light blue tiger stripes um, with the black netting on this side. It's light blue except for the red cross and it has white netting. You'll see that they also uh, made the plastic eyelet match the stripe that leads up to it on each side. And so this one has the two light blue versus the single red. All of this is a, a genuine Nubuck suede. Um, the only thing synthetic on these are really the plastic bits, the netting, the eyelets, things of that nature. There is a net hit on the back too with the logo underneath it, um, hinting off of the chain link. Uh, the heel loop I could probably take or leave. You know, some people aren't a big fan of that. I do like that they kind of naturally bend down so they're not like popped up all the time. Although it does kind of hide the logo, uh, which does have a nice uh, red leather and this ASICS embroidered. The contrast stitching is an awesome hit on these. I absolutely love all the white stitching and the obvious nod to the chain link uh, fencing all across the tongues, especially at the angle they're stitched to really give it that full appearance. And you'll see they, they spared no expense stitching all the way down into the other panels of the shoe. The suede on the toe box is better than any suede on any sneaker I've ever had, um, including more than 40 pairs of Saucony that I presently own. And uh, it's just incredibly soft. It's a little shaggy, has that amazing um, patent leather piping that goes on the top with the contrast stitching underneath it, dual stitched, mind you. Little, instead of a, a reflective hit on the toe box, you end up with um, this leather perforation poking through, and it's the same on, on both left and right shoe. They do match, you know, medial to lateral. Um, you do get the nice red hits on the medial uh, versus the gray on the lateral, and that kind of goes in line with these stripes. Um, but there's not, they're not a mismatched pair, so everything that's on one is the same on the other. Um, it's just different left to left to right down the middle in terms of the split of the shoe, apart from the toe box, obviously. But yeah, this suede is uh, is otherworldly amazing. <laughs> it's just incredible quality. I've had to waterproof these a couple times. Um, it kind of helps too because it, it'll keep them a little darker by, by proofing them. But yeah, I, I like both lace colors a lot. I'm switching it up to the uh, blue ones, which is partly what prompted this review. I do think the white looks really good because it kind of picks up more of the contrast stitching though. And it's a shame to cover that up. I do typically lace to the this hole here because um, just like these are, just because of it, otherwise it'll be way too long and dangly when you're tying them and the laces would practically drag on the ground. Um, but yeah, it's a cool patch for sure. Um, anyway, that is my long-winded take on a flashback from now eight years ago. Crazy to think I've owned these this long. I did not get them on release day. I did have to buy them secondhand or resale was second hand, I guess, technically, but they were dead stock when I got them. Anyway, um, it is, it is a, an amazing collab, extremely nice quality build. The attention to detail is just phenomenal. I, I, the only thing, I, I guess, if I was to be really particular with, and I can't really complain given the retail price tag, is it would have been cool to have a third lace set that had red. I would have loved to have more of a red and blue or red and white. Uh, type of hit and uh, maybe have a reverse aglet uh, with a blue aglet instead. But anyway, uh, apart from that, I really have no complaints. Oh, and the quilted liner. I almost forgot the liner. This is really crazy quilted. It's very uh, 3D feeling. It's uh, very smooth and yet has all the bumps and ridges um, of the kind of quilted feeling to it, uh, which has a nice grip to it. It keeps your foot in, quite frankly. And me, for me, these run true to size. This is a 12 and a half. They fit perfect. I have just enough toe room. Um, you know, the width is what I would call standard width. They're definitely not a wide shoe if you've never had a Gelite 3 before. Um, they, if anything, run slightly on the narrow side, kind of narrow to standard. Um, but yeah, just uh, phenomenal all around.